In this video, I'm going to be talking about William Blake's poem, The Lamb. Uh, the Lamb features in his Innocence collection, uh, which was then put with the, the Experience poems in 1794. So this is an Innocence poem. Uh, this video is aimed at A-level students, um, but again, it might be useful for students that are studying other levels and qualifications. I actually find this poem quite tricky to teach. I think it's because the poem is designed to be a bit of a riddle. Um, and despite it being a relatively short poem, uh, I do think this is one of Blake's much more ambiguous poems and, and takes you a little bit of time, I think, just to get your head around it. Um, in this poem, a child asks a lamb, uh, and the lamb is an image of selfless innocence, uh, who made it and who gave it its gentle, innocent qualities that it has. Of course, this is a poem that is often seen as the opposite poem to the tiger, where you have a fearsome more sinister, malevolent beast. The speaker then attempts to answer his own riddle. Um, the lamb was made by someone who calls himself a lamb, that being Jesus Christ. Um, the image of a child is also associated with Jesus in the gospel. Um, and like I said, whereas the tiger, you know, the, the use of the tiger um, makes us aware of the evil in the world, and that prompts us to question the creator. And if the creator is good, why did they create evil? Um, this, fail, this poem fails to take into account uh, any suffering in the world, which firmly places it in innocence. There's no suffering at all, it seems, in this, in this poem. Um, the poet pays tribute to Lord Christ, who was innocent and pure, uh, like a child, and meek and mild like a lamb. Uh, and the speaker revels in an innocent and simple presentation of religion, which is without the kind of restriction restriction that you have in some of the experience poems, for example. Um, so here is the poem, um, relatively short. Um, and again, typical of Blake, you can see there, particularly in the first half, lots of rhetorical questions, um, which the speaker is asking the lamb uh, about its origins um, and its characteristics. So I've just broken this down into two sections, um, really. Um, we have a semantic field here of nature and happiness, which is common with innocence. Stream, mead, veil, delight, bright, softest, tender, rejoice. So the semantic, the, the tone, the register of this language clearly places it within innocence, where we haven't got that world of experience knocking at the door, making things seem malevolent and nasty. And the child speaker asks a series of questions to the lamb, which can be seen as both simple questions, but also profound. Um, you know, who are we? Where do we come from? could be quite a simple question, but it often has quite a profound answer to it, because then you, you go into kind of uh, the meaning of life, uh, life as a, as a general kind of narrative. So these things can often be um, more detailed when you answer them, much more philosophical. The lamb, of course, is a common motif in Blake, but also a lot of um, political and social protest writing because of its innocent connotations. Lamb of God is a title used for Jesus in the book of John, for example, and it suggests that there is a synonymous relationship between Jesus, children and the lamb here. So this is like this triangle between all these figures of purity and innocence and goodness. Um, the lamb of God, i.e. Jesus, made the lamb because he created all living creatures um, because he is the creator, a.k.a. Lord God Jesus Christ. So uh, that's the kind of the, to some extent, the answer to the riddle. Um, and there is a sense here, of course, that the tender voice is the sweet bleating, which makes the countryside very happy and makes the veils rejoice. So you've got the personification there again, again, typical of Blake to personify nature uh, in terms of happiness and joviality and merriment. As we move into the second half of the poem, um, we get the answers to the question. So whereas in the tiger, we don't get the answers to the questions. Here, we, we kind of do, we get the answer to this riddle. So Blake saw Jesus as a figure of forgiveness at the center of Christianity, uh, which is of course at odds with the punitive God, the tyrannical God, uh, which is represented in some of the experienced poems. Um, as we move into the second part of the poem, we have a movement from the physical world of nature to the spiritual world um, as we go into more about um, the idea of, of the creator and, and Jesus Christ um, as well. Um, 
Christ was also a child when he first appeared on this earth as son of God. Um, so the child addresses the lamb as if it were another child. Um, and as we finish the poem, uh, it's very prayer like um, a reminder that, um, you know, the God bless thee bit, a reminder that Jesus sacrificed himself for the redemption of all. So lambs also have this motif of being quite sacrificial um, as well. So in the second half of the poem, I think there is this kind of synonymous relationship here between the lamb, the child and Jesus, the creator. Um, essentially, they're all the same is what the poem is suggesting, because they're all united in this kind of innocence, uh, purity, sacrifice, goodliness, um, all these kind of positive things that we would find in an innocence poem. So that is a la that is the lamb, uh, often seen as the sister poem to the tiger. Um, and again, a poem that might be useful if you had a question about the presentation of children or the presentation of religion as always being dogmatic or negative. This poem seems to conflict with that. So it's a good poem to refer to um, with those kind of questions as well, as well as anything about nature or the pastoral or the green world. OK, so that is Blake's poem. The lamb. It's all designed to be a bit of a riddle.